just going to try and generate a bit of a mind map about kidney disease. Now, kidney disease can be chronic kidney disease. And we call this CKD these days. Chronic kidney disease. But there can also be acute kidney disease, which we now call acute kidney injury. or AKI. Now, acute kidney injury can be subdivided. And the classic subdivisions are pre-renal, within the kidney itself, intrarenal, also called intrinsic, And the third classification is the post-renal. So we have these classifications of the etiology, the cause of acute kidney injury. Acute kidney injury is a sudden reduction in renal function, typically over days, normally about 24, well, 48 hours really. And we call it acute kidney injury. We used to call it acute renal failure. Now we need to try and order the causes of this uh, condition. So let's think about pre-renal first of all, pre-renal causes. Now this is caused primarily by reduced renal perfusion. Perfusion is the way that the blood flows through an organ, how it's perfused with blood. So there's reduced renal perfusion. Now, why is this? Well, there can be reduced renal perfusion because of fluid loss. Fluid loss resulting in low volumes of blood, low volumes of fluid in the body altogether. This would be hypovolemia. So there can be this hypovolemia, hypo low vol emia, A E M I A, in the blood. And of course, if you're watching in the States, you don't put the A, whereas in the UK we put the A. Now this can be caused by uh, hemorrhage, there can be bleeding, internal or external bleeding of course, you don't have to see the blood. Remember hemorrhage can be onto the floor and four more, four more places, the thoracic cavity, the abdominal cavity, the pelvic cavity and bleeding into the limbs from the long bones and burns also cause a lot of fluid loss extensive burns. Dehydration. So we might think for example of diarrhea or vomiting leading to dehydration leading to hypovolemia. But as well as fluid loss there can also be abnormal distribution. Of body fluids. So it's kind of like there can be enough fluid there. It's just that the fluid is in the in the wrong place. So why might this happen? Well, one possibility is um, cardiac failure or cardio well let's, let's say cardiogenic shock first so 
So in cardiogenic shock, the heart is unable to pump out enough blood to maintain the perfusion of the tissues of the body. And heart failure is also true because in heart failure, again, heart cardiac output is insufficient to maintain the metabolic demands of the tissue of the body. And because the heart pump can't pump out the fluid, it can't deal with the venous return, so the fluid accumulates or the blood accumulates in the venous return. So it's not so much that there's a shortage of blood, but there's too much blood in the venous system and not enough in the arterial system. So cardiogenic shock and um, heart failure. Now also um, allergic, allergic shock if it's prolonged, because in allergic shock there's a, a vasodilation and that drops the blood pressure. And when you drop the blood pressure, you drop the perfusion of the tissues, including the perfusion of the kidneys. These, some, these are sometimes called uh, distributive shocks. The, the fluid is uh, not properly distributed as it should be in the physiological situation. And another possibility is a septic shock. Now, septic shock is associated with vasodilation and reduced blood pressure. Of course, shock is reduced perfusion of the tissues for vascular reasons. But as well as that, in, in septic shock, if the sepsis, then you get bacterial toxins in the blood. And it's, it's toxins that make us sick, of course. That's, that's why bacteria make you sick. And that has a great effect. The toxins have a great effect on the intrarenal causes. They, the toxins produced by severe systemic sepsis are going to greatly sensitize many of the tissues in the kidney, particularly the endothelial cells lining the renal tubules, uh, can be very sensitive to the effect of toxins. And that can greatly increase their susceptibility to something like fluid loss. So I read, I read you were seeing that um, acute kidney injury can be multifactorial. And in fact, usually it is multifactorial. Another reason we get abnormal fluid distribution is what we call uh, third spacing. Fluid can be in a third space. Now in this context, the first space, I guess, would be the intracellular fluid. The second compartment would be the extracellular fluid, which includes the blood and the tissue fluids. But anything that's in a third space where it's not supposed to be. So, for example, fluid can accumulate in the peritoneal cavity in peritonitis. Uh, there's plenty of fluid there, it's just in the wrong places. It's not available to the circulatory system. So there we have pre-renal causes. So these are all pre-renal causes here. So we've got pre-renal, um, so pre-renal reduced perfusion and all of these things, all of these. Can be causes of pre-renal failure. So to continue my mind map on another piece of paper, we now want to look at the uh, intrarenal causes. So I think we'll pause briefly there, then we'll come back and look at the intrarenal causes. <laughs> 